Hello, I'm Ralph Gable for the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. If you've done any amount of antenna modeling, you've probably developed a system of entering the antenna geometry. We tend to fall into a pattern to maintain consistency and make sure we do not forget anything. The question that came to my mind one day was does it actually really matter what order I enter the specifics of the geometry into 4NEC2? Do I always have to work from left to right or bottom to top? I created two very basic experiments to answer this question in a somewhat rudimentary way. The answer came out to be, well, yes and no. You'll have to keep watching to find out more. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel. Now, take a look at these two scenarios. So I've defined a Yagi kind of antenna here to operate at 146 megahertz. I defined Q wave to be the length of the elements here. Distance is the distance between the two elements as well as the length of this feed line. And then MULT is a multiplier which defines overall the length of this element here. Now let's look at the definitions here. Notice I go from minus Q wave to plus Q wave on the X coordinates. And for the reflector, I go from minus Q wave times our multiplier to plus Q wave times our multiplier. And so now let's see what this looks like when we run the calculator here. We do the frequency sweep from 144 to 148, and we get about a 1.5 to 1 or better SWR across the entire 2 meter band. If we do a far field pattern to see what its propagation looks like at 146 megahertz, looking at this, if we look at it from the top, we can see that it is relatively directional for just two elements. But what happens if we change the order in which we define our reflector element here? Let's say that we go from plus Q wave times MULT to minus Q wave times MULT. The first thing that we notice is that now you can see the feed line that goes from one element to the other crosses because we are now 180 degrees out of phase with this one than we are this one. So you can use this method in order to swap the phase by 180 degrees from one element on an antenna to another. But how does that affect its SWR and its far field pattern? Now our SWR sits at about eight to one and at best six to one across the two meter band. Let's look at the far field pattern. So right off the bat, looking down from the top, you can see the cross in the feed line, but notice the pattern. It's exactly the opposite of what it was. We have more radiation coming out this side of the antenna than we do this side of the antenna. So the question is, well, you know, that might be true when we are defining something that has a feed line between two elements. What about if you have a passive element like we have here? Well, I defined a driven element here and a reflector element. As before, Q wave is the length of each of these legs. The distance is the distance between the two elements. And the multiplier tells us that this one here is 1.1765 times as long as this element. What does this look like when we do the frequency sweep? So here's the frequency sweep. It's 1.5 to 1 or better across the entire 2 meter band. How about the far field pattern? So this is what the far field pattern looks like as expected. This is a reflector. This is the driven element. And you can see we have more energy going in the direction of the driven element has been reflected by the reflector. What happens now if we take this same exact geometry and simply 
change the order in which we define the reflector. Looking at the geometry as shown in this window here, having changed the direction that we define the reflector, we don't see any change here. But did it change its operation? Let's do a frequency sweep and see what the SWR looks like. The SWR doesn't look any different. It's about 1.5 to 1 across the entire band. How about the directionality though? Let's do a far field calculation. This too doesn't show a lot of change. So yes, it matters when connecting things together that are driven. You can use this fact to force one element to be out of phase with another element. On the other hand, it doesn't seem to make a difference when the element that you're entering is a parasitic or passive element. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Toodaloots.